Hello, hello, Rocio. Up, oh, you're muted, my friend. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You look fantastic. <laughs> Good morning from India. I know it's evening there. It is. It, it is. is. Hi, little Rocio. Hi, Ted. Good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't see you in person in April. Yeah, yeah. It was so unfortunate. We have been so much looking forward to your visit. Yeah. I have sent a note to Bruce asking you to come in November. Hopefully, by that time, everything should be fine. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what kind of international yeah. travel restrictions are put right. in place and yeah yeah but we'll talk about that later now jeff is in control <laughs> in control no i'm not in control but uh i'm glad you were able to make it with us this morning now <laughs> yeah I'm it doesn't feel like morning to us <laughs> hey um as we begin i just want to um, certainly focus in on what's happening in Northeast India in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. Of course, we're experiencing some things here in the United States, and mm -hmm. we were just curious as to what kinds of things that, um, that you were experiencing there in Northeast India. Um, what, what kind of restrictions is your area under right now? Uh, we are under the national lockdown. You know, the whole of India is under lockdown. And then all the states are given the uh, authority to monitor that lockdown. And we currently, our state, Manipur, is uh, in the green zone. We have had two cases, but they have fully recovered. And currently we do not have anyone with a positive case. However, the government is uh, taking every possible preventive measures. And so they have placed us under lockdown. And, uh, uh, and the police were, uh, given the power to penalize uh, violators. And then they are uh, even to, uh, given the power to arrest uh, vehicles that runs without permission. Mm. And our charges, we have, have been closed down for the last 40 days because of the lockdown. And then we have uh, online YouTube services that we, uh, many of us. Oh no, not that. And then uh, you, you see the interruption? Is there an interruption? There was an interruption, yes. Yeah. So you were telling us about the local churches and what they're doing. Yeah, we were not, uh, we, we have not been able to have services. Mm -hmm. And so some of our pastors, they switch on to uh, YouTube preaching, you know, mm -hmm. they, uh, they premiere YouTube preachings and then we watch them at our homes. That's, and that's... then we, yeah, we have college uh, offerings are, uh, brought to the church where we have one person who is receiving on Sundays. And so those who want to give tithes, they go there or uh, the lay leaders call, go visiting the houses and collect them. We don't want our pastors without paid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So... And then, Oh, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were going to say something else. And then uh, with regards to the college, Bible mm -hmm. college, 
uh, we have been just through the middle of the semester when the lockdown began. And so we, uh, we close, we suspend all classes. And then all the teachers <coughs> begin teaching through distant learning. And we communicate with our students with, uh, with WhatsApp, WhatsApp social media platform. I think it is not very much used in the United States, WhatsApp. What's that? Not, not quite as much as internationally. Yes, here it is very, very, it is, you know, it, it has all the, uh, all the facilities of an email. Okay. And then you can use it through your phone. And it is not as complicated as an email for those who are not familiar with, you know, email systems. Mm -hmm. And so all the teachers created a WhatsApp group according to their courses and students are added into that group and so the teachers they recorded audio lectures and then they posted in on the group and they request they require for uh, feedbacks reactions and then some of them records uh, through YouTube, YouTube video lectures, or they choose some uh, existing lectures related to their subjects. And then they send You have to do some editing. Yeah, yeah. We're, we'll be do, that'll be okay. We can do that. La Rosa, I mean, can you hear us? You look like you're frozen here. That's well, a long. That's a long pause. Uh, Wait, we had a long pause right. there on that one. Okay. We, we, uh, we lost you for about thirty seconds, maybe 20, 30 seconds. Okay. Let me let me repeat. Uh, we have a. Uh, as uh, uh, teachers, our professors, they uh, send out audio record lectures or YouTube video lectures, or they choose some existing YouTube lectures that are related to their subjects. And then they send it to the students, ask them to listen and uh, react to those lectures. And some language subjects like Greek and Hebrew, uh, that is a little bit difficult. And so some of them quietly ask the students to come over to the college campus. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a little bit difficult and risky, but some manage to come and they give instructions. Uh, while maintaining social distance. Okay. So one of the things you mentioned earlier was that you had only two COVID-19 cases that were happening in the state of Manipur. And, yes, right. uh, and that uh, they, every, both of those cases are doing better at this point. And yeah, so, they, have been, they have tested negative now. Good. And, and so in terms of the state or the country of India, the main country of India, um, they are not experiencing that same, those mild uh, number of cases. They're having larger outbreaks. Can you describe that with us? Or yeah, the, right. The other parts of India, like Maharashtra, that is the state where Mumbai is and then Delhi and uh, Bangalore, the city of Bangalore uh, and Chennai, Madras. There have been a lot of cases and it has been on the increase every day. <clears throat> and, um, excuse me, we have 
according to the statistics, we have a total cases of more than 50,000 now. And uh, some, of, some doctors in Delhi has predicted that this we may continue till June and July. The, the increase, the increase in the, in the infections will continue to increase till June and July. But uh, compared to Italy, Germany, the United States, uh, the rates of increase is not very, not, not uh, very fast. Probably because of the lockdown or probably because of uh, less testing. The testing uh, facilities are also expensive and I think the government is not, uh, uh, <clears throat> not doing so many tests like other countries. Okay, so if, if I think you and I, um, or when we talked this morning, you had mentioned that um, your healthcare facilities in your region would mm -hmm. not be able to sustain a, an outbreak of, of any kind of definitely, magnitude. Yes, definitely. So even uh, we have one government-run hospital and then one small private mission hospital and one or two clinics you know private clinics around the town and if we have an outbreak such as being faced in other parts of india and other parts of the world i think uh, we will be in a very very bad shape uh, recently we have uh, one person who work in the hospital says that uh, you know in spite of all the preparations that has been uh, done he said that they have only three beds in the isolation group mm. now if the uh, pandemic have reaches us and it breaks out then that three beds will be filled in no time. <laughs> and I don't know how they will cope. I think uh, we will be in a very bad situation. Yeah, so we'll definitely be in prayer concerning that. Yes, we'll greatly appreciate your prayers on that. And even the churches and uh, even our family prayers, we've been constantly praying that the Lord will protect our state. You know, we are a remote part of India, at the border area. And we don't draw, we don't draw the atten attention of the federal government, the central government, uh, like other areas of India. Mm. And there's a poor <clears throat> facility and uh, resources, lack of resources. And in spite of all our good intention, I think we are, we will have a difficult time coping up in the event of such an outbreak. All right. I wondered if Ted had any questions that he wanted to ask at this time. Uh, I, let me just uh, add one more before Ted comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, now the state government is uh, trying to bring in uh, some of its people stranded in other parts of India. There are many people who are stranded in other parts of India who have been working there and now they are no longer able to work. They need to pay rent and they don't have food to eat and they want to come home. And the government is trying to provide uh, transportation to bring those people in. Mm -hmm. And that is one of our fears here. Mm -hmm. Because once people from different parts of India or even the world comes, started coming in, no doubt they will 
they will quarantine them. But the way they quarantine is they put them together in a building. They don't keep it individually separate. So in one room, some three, four persons will stay together. And of among all those people who are brought in, if one, even at least one person has the, vir the virus, you know, the quarantine room can be the breeding ground for the virus. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how things will turn out. So uh, that's what I want to add, so just Ted, if you want to uh, ask any questions. Yes, I was curious about uh, food supplies. One of the things that happened here in the United States was just a lot of people going to the supermarkets and just buying all kinds of stuff. And at one point, you know, I was I went to the market to get chicken and I couldn't get any of that. I was curious mm -hmm. how the, mm -hmm. the food supply for you guys has been. I know it's been different all over the world, but how has it been for you? That is, uh, that is uh, another problem that I have not yet uh, mentioned. Uh, uh, even the government, people who are works in the government, their salaries have been cut. And uh, many churches are receiving less contributions. And so uh, it's going to affect their salaries. And teachers who work in private schools, they are getting like 70 or 50% of their salaries because the schools are not running anymore. And then daily workers, wage earners, uh, there is no more work for them. And even if you have the money, you cannot buy whatever you want because the shops are closed and vegetables are becoming rare. And uh, many churches collected money as much as they can, trying to help people who are in need. Even our church groups, we have a relief, uh, relief committee mm -hmm. that raise funds and then uh, give rice and food to the needy. Uh, such kind of activities are given permission by the government to run around, to drive around, and engage in relief work and so uh yeah it's it's uh, that is one uh, aspect that has been very difficult for our people mm -hmm. i was curious um i had heard from cap that yes. the ecc church of india was trying to hold a business in uh mm -hmm. this uh saturday april 25th yes. maybe were you guys able to do that uh <laughs> yes we 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 are trying to do because uh we receive a uh your email where you have cancelled the national conference mm -hmm. and then you have uh move it for next year mm -hmm. that is not very easy for us here <laughs> so, <laughs> so so it is the a year of transition, you know, yeah. a year of transition and the existing leaders are reluctant to uh, just to, um, to, to declare for cancellation of the uh, conference. Yeah. And then there will, even if they do that, there will be objections on from others. And so we are trying to do that and we have selected an isolated spot outside outskirt in the outskirt of the city and it will be on a prayer mountain i think i have taken jeff to the prayer mountain uh, we have been there uh, during your visit we will go there something like early in the morning before eight o'clock before the police are on duty you know <laughs> <laughs> and then even if you drive a vehicle, you cannot have uh, carry uh, so many people. If you, in a four wheeler, you can have up to, uh, you know, four, three persons, not more than that. Uh, because of the, of the social distance policy. Mm -hmm. And so we are planning to drive over there on this Saturday morning. 
and then conduct the business session as quickly as possible and then come back uh, by by noon before noon some of those prayer cabins are pretty small <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i remember but, sitting up there and like 15 people rolling out of this you know eight by you remember, ten size yeah. you cabin. remember the main hall the main hall at the center mm -hmm. yeah we are, we are planning to have in that main hall okay so we will be at least a hundred members but due to the lockdown we do not expect that 100 people will come mm -hmm. and so we will consider whoever is unable to come we will consider them as leave and so they will not affect the quorum you do you know the quorum what i mean mm -hmm. yeah if 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 uh, at least two thirds of the members are not present, we cannot proceed with the business. Uh, two thirds of the members may not be certainly present to, uh, on Saturday, but those who are not able to come, we will consider them as leave. And if you are get granted a leave, you can be counted in the quorum. That is how we do. Okay. So that will not affect the business. So the business came, would be able to proceed, I suppose. So now you were going to be this coming conference selecting a new general director. Yes, is the that still you know going to happen? Yeah, the general director is on the on a rotation basis. Okay. And so it is already selected. Okay but he will be formally uh, scrutinized and accepted during the business session okay but that would be just a formality and is there which presbytery is the director going to be from do you know uh, that? he'll be from from the eca evangelical churches association okay And uh, his wife is uh, working with us at the Bible College. And he also is a graduate of the Bible College many years ago. Okay. So it will be an honor to have him as our leader, one of the uh, products of our Bible College. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Was uh, I'm trying to remember Reverend Angam? Was yeah, Reverend Angam. Yes. Is was he from the ECA or no? Yeah, he's from the ECA. Okay, I uh, thought he was. Yeah, and now he he's retiring. Yes, I got a letter from him. I was with him in Nepal back okay. in 2013. Yes, yes, yes during his time as the general director yes he was general director at that point and i was there and uh, elias from mexico was there as well okay, okay. and we spent some time together in nepal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh actually it was the time for another presbytery but the other presbyteries do not have a candidate with the qualified degrees credentials okay so if one presbytery do not have we move to another presbytery the next and so the uh the other press since the other presbyteries did not have so we move on to another so it it, it comes on the eca okay and they have a qualified person and so is being nominated. Well, I'm glad you guys will be able to continue to do that this year. That's that's been canceled for us in the USA. That's not going <laughs> to happen until 2021. Right, right. Lord willing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's very good. I I 
I think this accomplishes what uh, I had set out to um, you know, find some oh, answers yeah. for things that would help my yeah. church. And I yes. invited Ted to you know, you know, get some answers for things that might be in, of interest to the greater EC church. Yes. So appreciate your time this morning, Lal Rosim. Thank you, Jeff, for having me. Yes. And um, as we close out, I'm just going to ask if Ted would just close us in time of prayer together. Okay. Yes. Sure. God, thanks for the fact that though we can't be together physically, we're able to meet in this way yes. and by your spirit be united as brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, uh, we just uh, bring before you our world and the situation that we collectively as humans find ourselves in. And God, we know that you can can rid this world of this virus. And we pray, God, you would. And uh, Lord, if this virus remains, we pray that you would help us to be faithful followers of Jesus and uh, help others to come to know him as Lord and Savior as well. And God, I want to pray specifically for brothers and sisters in India in the current lockdown situation they're in with the uh, difficulty of many people losing jobs and wanting to travel home and the complications and dangers that that creates for uh, coming back to their to their homes uh, lord for the supply line of food and just being able to go and get food and uh, lord i just pray for the churches and the, and our our family that is there and for the pastors who are trying to do the best they can to care for uh, church members Lord, we pray, too, for the difficult decisions and things that the leadership of uh, EC Church of India has to make and uh, the business session they're trying to hold and just yeah. trying to do that a different way. Lord, we pray that that would all be uh, overseen by your watchful care, God, and mm -hmm. that you would protect those traveling there and, and be with them. Lord, we pray for Valerosium, who is leading a college and, and trying to maintain social distance, but be able to provide uh, good education for the students that are there and prepare them for uh, future ministry. So we pray for his leadership as well, and that you would be with him. And, and God, we just ultimately pray for your protection uh, for our families and for our churches and uh, Lord that you would help us to minister to the world around us that desperately needs the hope that is found in Jesus and may we provide that Lord by us as your church bearing witness uh, even in the midst of a virus to the goodness of Jesus Christ and yeah. what he offers in our lives and we pray in his name amen, amen. All right thank you thank yes you. Thank Thanks, you, Lalo. Have, have a good day. We're Thank going to bed. You. Yeah. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. Have a, have a good night, Laura. Thank you. See ya. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. All right. See you, Ted. See you, Jeff. Thanks. I'll send you a recording then. All right. Thanks.